It's so good, I'm foraging every last bit I can. He said after these two exercises, you should have trouble breathing. He was not lying. What is going on guys? Will here. Welcome to the video. So the fitness and bodybuilding community lost one of the greats the other day. Uh, John Meadows, aka the Mountain Dog, passed away at the age of 49. He influenced many that he met and many that he didn't meet. I never had the privilege of meeting him, but he was one of the first people that I stumbled upon when I first started my fitness journey and he really inspired me to start going to the gym. So to lose a guy like that is, it's really, really tough. So uh, I wanted to make a tribute video where I eat like him, train like him, share with you guys some of his philosophies and just have a whole day dedicated to John Meadows. Going to be heading to the gym shortly, so we're gonna be making John Meadows' favorite pre-workout meal, which is called the concoction bowl with a protein shake on the side. So you typically have this meal 30 to 90 minutes before training. It was not a big meal. This was simply so he didn't get hungry during his workout. So he'd recommend for males to have anywhere from 25 to 30 grams of protein, 30 to 40 grams of carbs, and around 10 grams of fat pre-workout. First thing we gotta do, is get a third of a cup of cream of rice. So very easy to digest. It's literally just blended up white rice. I'm gonna put this into a bowl. There we go. And then we're obviously gonna add just a little bit of water because thicker the better, even if it does cause some light choking. And then we're gonna put it into the microwave for around 45 seconds. Now it's time to give the cream of rice what I like to call the bedroom treatment. So we're gonna to top it off with some nut butter and some chocolate spread. So I'm um, gonna go with one tablespoon of peanut butter. The reason I'm doing the quotes is because John shows us that when it comes to peanut butter, uh, regular forms of measurement do not exist. Basically one tablespoon. Okay. So I'll actually show you guys what a tablespoon looks like. That is a tablespoon right there. Okay, going in. And then it says chocolate syrup to taste. So as much as I'd like to be generous with it, this has uh, their name on somebody tonight. So I'm gonna do a little bit. There we go. And all you do, it's making a, I'm making a disaster in here. All you do is you just mix it up. And that is the concoction bowl. On the side, gonna have a protein shake. I'm gonna use cappuccino by Blue Star. I don't drink my protein, but if I get arms like him, I convert. So. Gonna put the protein in, and this is the pre-workout meal for today. The famous concoction bowl pre-workout taste test. Here we go. Mm. Very sweet. It's pretty much like peanut butter cement. The one thing I love about peanut butter is that it pretty much masks the taste of whatever you put it on. But I actually really dig this. Mm. So at the age of 13, John Meadows moved with his grandmother to Columbus, Ohio. One day he was in a store and stumbled upon a fitness magazine. He opened it up and he was instantly fascinated with what he saw, the physiques that he saw, uh, but especially the kinesiology part where it showed the muscles and how they functioned. I also have a similar story from my childhood, although the magazine that inspired me spent most of his time hidden under my bed. But when he opened that magazine, that is where that passion for bodybuilding ignited. So in that same year, at the age of 13, he competed in his first ever bodybuilding show against kids ages 14 to 17. Of course, he came in dead last as he was the youngest and least developed, but it wasn't even about winning. It was about just the love of bodybuilding and the process of competing. And I find that incredible. You know, a lot of us, bodybuild our entire lives and think about competing forever. And for a kid at 13 to open a magazine and in that same year compete, I think that just shows a different level of love and passion for the sport of bodybuilding. This is good. Definitely onto something here. Now let's go to the gym. There is no denying that John Meadows' physique was absolutely insane. There was not a muscle group on his body that wasn't extremely developed, but most notably his back was incredible. But it actually used to be his weakest body part. And the workout we're doing today, he used to really bring it up. So I mentioned back at breakfast, he competed in his first show at 13, but he actually did become an IFBB pro, but it wasn't an easy road to get there. So it took him 16 years and 14 attempts, but he finally got it in 2015, where he placed first in the NPC universe. So I'm about to hop into the back workout. First thing, Meadows Row. You must be wondering, John Meadows, Meadows Row, what 
it's because he had the row named after him because he really popularized the movement. He said this movement specifically really thickened up his back and I aspire to have a donut named after me. And if you make it a cake donut, I will haunt you for the rest of your life. So we're gonna do three sets, eight to 12 reps, not too much weight. We're using the 25 pound plates instead of the 45 plates for a bigger range of motion. Got a good solid base and I'm driving my elbow. And think of your arms as just hanging attached to the bar. Okay, one set done. Crazy contraction, so he does recommend that you use straps because you are holding the thicker part of the bar. And he says if you don't use it, some people get kind of like wrist pain because it's just it's hard to hold it. So if you're gonna try this, recommend using some straps. For these in the 8 to 12 rep range, you want the last two reps to be super, super hard. RP 9, 10. Oh man, that wins you. Next exercise we are doing is the single arm barbell row. So he started to implement this in 2002 and he said this exercise put more muscle on his lats than anything else that he ever did. So we're gonna be holding this in a neutral grip as opposed to the meadows row, which is pronated. Focus more on the lats, three sets, eight to 12. Flat back. And again, you're driving your elbow. Just drive your elbow. None of these exercises are a lot of weight, but you really, really, really feel the contraction. So if you have a landmine at your gym, I recommend trying these out. Those are really tough. I think those have put more probably muscle on my last than anything I've done. after these two exercises, you should have trouble breathing. He was not lying. Ooh. So the next exercise we are doing is the banded pull-ups, three sets, eight to 12 reps. So it's not that he couldn't do a regular pull-up without the band, it's just that it felt better on his elbow for his elbow tendonitis. He didn't swing as much, better form, better range of motion, and a better contraction at the top of the movement. So we go again, three sets, eight to 12 reps. Step into it. Take about a medium grip, about right here. Now look at your form on this. See how strict the form is? If you do have elbow tendonitis like I do, it actually does feel a lot better because when you're at the bottom, you have something kind of holding you versus just all the dead weight just hanging down and pulling on your elbow. So if you do have problems with your elbow, you like doing pull-ups, maybe start implementing those. My back is done. Next thing we are doing is the rear delt dumbbell fly. Three sets, 20 to 25 reps. So when he says when you go light, you do a lot of reps, you go to failure. This is one of the exercises that he does that he only starts counting when it hurts. So you're gonna put your head onto the pad so you don't swing, and we're gonna go to failure here. not neglect the rear delts. They bring up the shoulders. You make, it gives you a stronger bench press, critical muscle group. Let's go do some biceps. 
when it comes to arm training, me and John actually have very similar philosophies, although only one of us has something to show for it. So we were doing three sets of 12 to 15. This is his favorite bicep exercise. So he'd really prioritize his brachialis muscle because what it does is it pushes your bicep out and makes it pop and his arms are absolutely massive. So every single set to failure. So not that much volume, but a lot of intensity. I like to use a good full range of motion on these all the way down to really engage that lower bicep too. That really keeps you locked in. So just two more sets and that's gonna be the workout. Okay, so that is gonna wrap up the John Meadows back and bicep workout. Gonna head get some groceries and make a post-workout meal. Yes, no. Yes, no. Ten dollars for a dozen sounds about right. So John Meadows was actually a massive donut fan. Every single day post workout, he'd come oh, and get a Oh, bro, shut up! No, he wasn't. He wasn't. The whole food hot table is literally an aphrodisiac. You must be wondering, Will, why did you go to Whole Foods? You look like a Beverly Hills housewife getting the most expensive eggs, the wildest of salmons. That's because John Meadows prioritized micronutrients over macronutrients, if only Kitty was as interested in micro things. But he did say the best food comes from animals that were fed their natural diet. So staples in his diet consisted of, you know, grass-fed beef, free-range eggs, and wild salmon. These eggs were $10 for a dozen, so I'm expecting the most golden goodness of yolk. He never threw out the yolk, he loved the yolk. So let's see here. On the flat surface, bang. Bang. Well, that's a let down. That kind of looks like a Costco egg. So we got some wild salmon, two free range eggs, some white rice, and some greens, which are hard to find, but I promise you guys they're right there. So the salmon, the eggs, and the greens are three of the seven foods he says that you must have in your diet. I haven't had wild salmon, and I don't think I've ever had it, so I'm gonna try it right now and let you guys know what I think. I spent a lot of my days chasing wild meat, and in the kitchen it should be no different, because this, it's phenomenal. Oh my God, there's a massive difference here. Now for the egg, egg with a little bit of rice, let's do that. You can taste the difference, totally taste the difference. So a lot of people must be wondering, why was he called the mountain dog? And I was actually wondering that myself. So I searched up and his nickname came from the, the dog breed, the Bernese mountain dog. It was known as a very um, versatile work dog. So no one really knows when that nickname came to be and why he chose it, but it stuck on so much that that actually ended up being the name of a bunch of his programs. So gonna have this, and then we're gonna head outside and do one of his favorite forms, actually not one of, his favorite form of cardio. Unfortunately for me, John Meadows' favorite form of cardio was swimming. And fun fact, he was actually a lifeguard in junior high school. So he liked swimming because it was really great at working your lung capacity. It was easy to recover from and it was just a total body workout. So he would do multiple laps at the public pool and I'd imagine with those massive arms, he's turning the public pool into a wave pool. So he likes to do a hit circuit style of training. We're gonna do 10 to 15 seconds all out, followed by 45 second rests, eight to 10 times. And we'll see if I can survive because you guys know I'm not the best swimmer. Okay, we're just gonna do one lap of the pool. I'd imagine that's gonna take me around 10 seconds. Let's do it. Oh, I guarantee you probably swims at double my speed. That's probably like a bear out, out swimming a beaver, you know? So 45 seconds rest, repeat that process eight to 10 times.
because it's timed, technique is just out the window. I'm not even trying. I'm just trying to get there as fast as possible. I'm usually a lot better than that. But the one thing about you know working on your lung capacity is that you can hold your breath longer, which therefore helps your throat capacity. Three more hours to go. Tenth and final round. I want you guys to rate me out of ten here. Ready? Let's go. That's about a two. That's a solid two. Did great. Looks like an eight. Yeah? Yeah, an eight. Solid eight. So for the post cardio snack, we're going to be making his two minute ice cream, which is coincidentally one of my many nicknames in high school. So it's a very different style of ice cream to what I'm used to. And I'm kind of worried about it, but we will see how it is because it seems to be amazing. One of his favorite kind of high protein, low calorie dessert. So starting off with one cup of liquid raw egg whites. So this is kind of like that one time I wish my Vitamix actually overheats. So it cooks a little bit. So we're gonna go one cup right in. Then we're gonna go with one scoop of some protein. So I'm going with chocolate peanut butter, a scoop. Next up, we're gonna go with one tablespoon of some all natural peanut butter. I haven't had this much peanut butter in a day since pledge week, but go with one tablespoon. There we go. And then it says the banana is optional if you want more carbs, but you don't need it if you don't want it. I'm not gonna put it in because I have a big weekend ahead and I need some more practice. So that is pretty much it. And now we're gonna add a bunch of ice and we blend it up and that's the ice cream. No xanthan gum. I am slightly worried. This seems way too easy to be good. But we're gonna blend it up and uh, see what happens here. Oh. Okay, that was much more wrist work than anticipated, but I think we have come to a end here. It does not look like regular ice cream, but we gotta do the test first. But here it is. It looks a bit icy. I mean, this is definitely a good option if you don't even have the macros for normal anabolic ice cream because this is super low calorie. Mm. It's actually really good. Really good. Again, peanut butter steals the show. The protein has to be really good for this to be good. You would never guess egg whites in it at all. I dig it. I do think. Xanthan gum should be in here to add a creaminess to it, but overall, very, very good option. And it's sweet too. One of John Meadows' favorite cheat meals was sushi, specifically rolls with salmon and cream cheese. And it, coincidentally, The Rock's favorite cheat meal and roll as well. So they shouldn't call it the Philadelphia roll, maybe the anabolic roll. So I'm gonna give it a taste test right now. And I'm going in. Not authentic at all. You know, from the wild salmon earlier and having this salmon now, I kind of feel like one of those kids that asked for McDonald's on the way home from a fancy restaurant. So along with sushi, some of his other favorite food is simply a grilled cheese and blueberries with whipped cream. So even John knew that some things taste better with a modest layer of whipped cream. Why are you looking at me? Back at home now and I am going to wrap up the video here. John was an amazing bodybuilder, uh, husband, father, and just an overall amazing human being. You didn't have to know him to see that. Um, you know, even though he's not here with us, he has left us a wealth of knowledge and a mindset that we should all adopt. You know, he, he was unstoppable and it wasn't because he didn't face any failures or doubts, but it's because he continued on despite them. You know, life does not get any easier or more forgiving. We just get stronger and more resilient and that's what he represents. So that was a little tribute. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to drop it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll see you guys in the next one.